Hi there. So for this flat iron tuning tech tip, we're going to talk about what you need to know if you've had a bearing failure. Unfortunately, when you're talking about modified Subarus, um, there's one of the failure fails that is all too common. And we get a lot of questions about, well, I've had a bearing failure. What do I need to replace? What do we need to look at? Um, so this is basically just kind of a quick overview of what you really need to know if you've had a bearing failure. And, and the very simple answer to that question is, if you've had a bearing failure, that basically sends metal particles of the bearing through your engine oil. And so anything that the oil touches will carry those metal contaminants through. So anything that you're going to reuse that the metal or that the oil touches, you've got to really thoroughly look at and clean. And there are some things um, that we would say you pretty much probably can't clean thoroughly enough to be 100% sure that there's not going to be any contamination that moves from the old failed engine into the new engine. And where this is, or why this is so important is because if you have metal contamination that you transfer from one part onto the new engine, you can have, you know, replace everything else, but if that metal contamination is hiding in one of these parts that you move over to the new engine, it can take out a brand new block, you know, very, very quickly. Um, and so that's where, you know, it's, there, there's, there's some things that, uh, that are kind of gotchas that you want to look at your place and got, got a display of them here. Um, one of the starting points is the oil pan. Um, generally speaking, I would say this is something that can be cleaned out and reused, but it's not something that can just be quickly moved over to the new engine. If you're going to reuse an oil pan, You've got to be 100% sure that you can get underneath the baffles and everything to thoroughly clean it again so that none of that contaminated oil will transfer into the new engine. If you're not 100% sure that you can clean this out thoroughly enough to, to remove all contamination, then you know replacing it would not be a bad idea. Um, one of the most common things that's overlooked that we recommend to people is this. This is an oil cooler. So if you have an STI, you have one of these. Uh, the Legacy GT turbos have this. The WRX only had them from 02 to 07. Starting in 08, Subaru actually removed this on the on, on the WRXs. But this, uh, both oil and coolant flow through it. And where this is located, basically this is this is the side that goes to the engine block. Your oil filter goes right here. Um, so oil and coolant go in this. And the oil uh, that, that sits in the oil cooler, I mean, this is basically almost like a you know, a seashell or something like that. There, there's so many chambers in here, your ability to flush this out, to be 100% certain that no metal contamination is going to transfer over, is, is basically zero. So um, anytime you have a, a bearing failure, this is something that we very strongly recommend replacing. Um, another thing that, that often goes overlooked is this. this. These are your AVCS solenoids. So um, if you have a newer turbo car or 2.5 liter turbo car, you have these solenoids that, that change the cam phasing. But again, uh, you know, oil flows through the heads, goes into these solenoids, and these are somewhat difficult to clean out. So again, if you're not 100% sure that you can clean these, um, they would need to be replaced. Um, the other one that has come about more recently and is, is probably one of the more overlooked are the AVCS pulleys themselves. So the AVCS lines, they're, they're hollow lines. Getting, getting those cleans is, is usually pretty straightforward. Um, but uh, like the camshafts are going to be reusing the camshafts. Those would also be need, to need to be thoroughly flushed. But where that oil goes is into these AVCS pulleys. Um, they look like they're very easy to clean, and it turns out that they are not. Um, you can remove this plate um, to get to the actual mechanism that changes the cam phasing. But reassembling this, it turns out, like Subaru says, this is not a serviceable item. It turns out reassembling these is not very easy at all. Um, if it's improperly reassembled, what can happen is it will actually bind up on the cam and it will cause, cause an AVCS failure code because the, the pulley is not able to change the phasing properly. Um, so this is something that if you have, again, if you have bearing failure, this is something that we recommend replacing pretty much every time unless you can find somebody that can actually properly rebuild these, which is another trick. Um, so again, just, just to underline, if you've had a bearing failure, the, the ultimate thought process has to be, if you, anything that, you, that the oil touches, if you're going to reuse it, it has to be cleaned thoroughly to the point where you're 100% certain 
the no bearing material is going to transfer into the new block. Um, other things to consider are the turbo. Uh, typically that, the, the, if it's a journal bearing turbo especially, that can be flushed with oil to the point where it's clean. Um, ABCS lines, as I mentioned. Um, cylinder heads. If you're going to be reusing a cylinder head, make sure you're working with a good machine shop that can thoroughly clean those cylinder heads. Um, if you, it's not enough to just put a, a cylinder head in a hot tank either to clean it. Um, when Subaru manufactures the cylinder heads, they actually drill through uh, the, the casting for the oil passages and then they put caps on the ends of those. What that does is that creates a dead end um, in part of that oil path and metal particles can definitely pool up there. And so you want to make sure that the machine shop that you're working with is familiar with Subaru heads, knows how to take those caps out and will tank the heads without those little caps in them um, so that no metal particles will transfer that way. Um, and that's pretty much it. So again, it's just, just remember, if you're going to reuse anything with oil touched, you've got to be 100% sure that none of that bearing material is going to transfer over. Um, and just, I guess, as another small footnote, um, uh, the bearing material is non-metallic. So if you're like you're using a magnet as kind of a gauge, um, you know, running a magnet around to try and make sure that hey, I've got all the metal out. Unfortunately, that is not an accurate measure of whether all the metal contamination has has been removed or not. So um, I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for watching this Flatirons tuning, tuning Tech Tip. If it helped you, please drop a like and check back for more.